Greetings, Minecrafters. Nonsanity here. And this is an Applied Energistics Let's Get Started tutorial. This is how to get started with the mod and the steps you'll need to take to add it into your play system. So, let's start at the beginning with some of the basics we have right here. Now you're going to need to be a little bit progressed into the game. And you're going to need some materials to get started. Some of them basic, cobble, sand, coal, wood. You want some iron. You're going to smelt up some glass and stone. You want to get to the point where you've gotten redstone. So you're going to have to do a good bit of mining. And you're also going to have to have visited the nether and gotten a lot of nether quartz and a little bit of glowstone. Uh, these numbers are not representative of what you need. It's just what I had here. Now, the other thing you're going to need is quartz. Certus quartz, not nether quartz. This is found in the overworld and some other dimensions. And it looks like this. And when you break it, when you mine it, you get about two or one or two certus quartz each. There are actually two varieties. There's regular certus quartz ore and charged certus quartz ore. Uh, the difference in appearance is... You can see here, like, these two pixels are a little bit different, these are different, these green ones are a little different, but on the charged, it's much smoother and brighter. They, the pixels look the same that are next to each other. Otherwise, if you have Wayla, like I have installed, what am I looking at is what Wayla stands for. It gives you a little box at the top of the screen, it tells you what you're looking at, and some other information about it. So you're going to need a lot of Certus Quartz, and you'll need at least some charged Certus Quartz to start. Once you do and you have these other materials, you can get started making stuff. So let's get started here at the beginning. Uh, a good way to start, even before you want to get into the machines of the mod, even before you have much of any resources, is to make some ore doubling mechanic. And there's a very easy ore doubling mechanic at the beginning of the game where all you need is sticks and stones and three Certus Quartz. And that gets you the Quartz Grindstone, which I'm going to take one here. You also need to use some sticks to make a wooden crank. Now when you've got these, you can place them down and either shift right click this on the top or I'm going to place it on the block there behind. And this gives you the grindstone. Now with the grindstone you can take some ore, toss it in there, and every time you click this it's going to go around once. And You can hold the mouse down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and you don't want to keep going it too long or it might break. So that was eight. With eight cranks, it'll take one ore and turn it into two ore powders, pulverized iron in this case. Toss it in the furnace, and it'll cook about up to two ingots. So from one ore, you get two ingots. It just requires a little bit of manually clicking this thing. You'll get better machines later on, but at the beginning, this is actually very handy and lets you stretch your ores when you need them the most. Now, the other thing you're going to have to need a lot of certus quartz and so there is a way to double that as well you take a piece of the certus quartz and you put it into the grindstone and you get certus dust certus quartz dust combine that with sand and you get two seeds so one quartz gets you two seeds you toss these seeds into a pool of water and they will slowly grow and don't worry they won't despawn but you do have to be either logged in near them or using a chunk loader for them to continue growing. Now these I put in here when I first started building all this. And as we can see, they're only 87% of the way. And that's been you know, hours and hours. Uh, well, maybe not hours and hours, but it's been a while. And they're still growing. Uh, so it's a slow process. You want to get it started pretty soon. Because not only does this double your quartz, it, it's turning it into something called pure Certus Quartz which is used in almost all the same recipes. Now you can't grind Certus Quartz back into dust because technically Certus Quartz would only make half a dust. But you can take this pure Certus Quartz and combine eight of them to get a Certus Quartz block. And they can use that in a crafting table to get four of the original Certus Quartz. So you can go backwards really quickly in the in crafting table, but to grow the Certus Quartz seeds, and there's multiple phases, beginning one-third, two-thirds, and then fully grown, to go this direction, it, it does take a long time in a pool of water like this. 
Now, the next thing you're going to need before getting any farther is fluix crystals. That's these purple ones here. Now, those you don't grow from a seed. Those you grow by combining one charged Sirtis Quartz. So that's the other ore that you're going to find a lot less of. One, Sirtis, one charged Sirtis Quartz, one Nether Quartz, and one Redstone. And if you toss those into a pool right next to each other, and after a moment, poof, you get two Fluix Crystals. So it turns one charged and one nether into two fluix. Now these you can grind down, combine with sand in the same way to make a fluix seed, toss it in here, and a long time later you get pure fluix crystals. So you can double your fluix crystals as well. And again, just about everywhere you can use these in a recipe, these will work as well. But there are a few recipes that will require these two pure crystals, so you will need at least some, even if you don't double everything. But it's probably a good idea to double because you're going to need lots as you go forward. So now let's get started on some of the machines. And for the first machine, we're going to first make quartz glass, which is Sirtis quartz or nether quartz dust. And some glass, and you get quartz glass. And the first thing you want to make is the energy acceptor. Now this thing converts other power systems into Applied Energistics to power. Now, this will take RF power. I think it'll even take IC2. Lots of different power systems. This will convert it into AE power. And it's not too expensive. Fluix crystal iron and some of this quartz glass. But uh, even if you're going to use only AE power, you do still need one because AE's main power generator, the vibration chamber, does use one in its crafting. Because here it's turning furnace coal power into Applied Energistics power. So let's get a couple of these. And now the other thing you're going to notice is that you don't get much of that um, charged Sirtis Quartz. And you need it to make the Fluix. And you're going to need a lot of Fluix. And you're going to need some charged as well. So how do you turn regular Quartz into charged Quartz? And that's to use the charger. So this will be, can be the first machine we make. And it does require two Fluix. And Fluix require charged. So you have to have a little bit of charged before you can make this. But once you do make it, you can charge your quartz. And here I've got a vibration chamber. So I'm going to toss this on top. Now the vibration chamber takes coal. I'm giving it blocks. And it will throttle itself to meet the needs of its machine. So it'll basically turn itself mostly off when it's not being used. But here, because I just plugged this in and it's charging up, it was heating up and now it's cooling off because it's no longer needed. You can see it makes less. It can make up to 10 AE per tick, or down to 1. Now this thing can be powered by RF. In fact, if you look up at the top, it says 3K RF. It's got 3,000 RF power in it. It got it from this thing. But uh, a lot of you in the config file, you can change the way Applied Energistics displays its power. And in this pack, it's been set to display as RF. Because most of the time, you're going to be generating RF. But you can generate it straight from coal. So with this thing, you can take regular regular uh, Sirtis Quartz Crystals and just right-click. It doesn't have any GUI. You just right-click it, and then there you can see it's changed. It's got a brighter blue sparkle there. And up in the whale, it says Charge Sirtis Quartz Crystal. Right-click again to take it out, and you can right-click again to put one in. You can see it changes. It doesn't take too long, but it seems to be random how long it takes. This one's taking a little bit longer. As you can see, it hasn't changed yet. There it is. So this way you can charge up your uh, Sirtis Quartz Crystals to become charged to Sirtis Quartz. And we'll need more of that later. Now, the next thing we're going to need is the Inscriber. Now this takes two Sticky Pistons and a Fluix. It too can be powered by RF, I believe. But here I'm going to stick it next to this and it's going to get its power from that. Now, the next thing you need for this are inscribing plates. You cannot make them. I mean, so far everything we've needed we've been able to go and get go mining to get. But this last thing you're going to need to explore to find. And something that helps is a meteorite compass. This is made with just one charged Sirtis Quartz surrounded by iron. This is one that requires charge in its recipe. But once made, as you can see, it's pointing in a direction. Now I can fly off in that direction, and it will take me to the nearest 
Meteor, and there's one right here. This is part of the world gen for applied energistics. You'll see these scattered about the landscape, but even more than that, there's a lot that are buried underground that are old impacts. This thing will find those as well. So if you come to a location and start spinning like this, saying you're right at one, and you don't see anything on the surface, start digging. You might want to figure out where the actual edge is, where it starts spinning, like right here, and you just start moving your way around. Here it stopped, here it started. So the edge is right here. So if you trace out the bounds and then dig in the center, you're more likely to find it. But it's not usually quite in the center of that zone. But this is made of sky stone, which is you know, a little bit more difficult to break, but no, I don't think it's as hard as obsidian. But buried in the center of this whole thing, and I've already dug in, dug in here, is a chest. You could hard to see it here, but there's a sky stone chest, my Wayla says. Open that up, and here I have an inscriber engineering press. There are four different types, and I've only found one or two in any one meteorite. And you're going to find doubles as you go around. So you're going to have to do some exploring to get all four types. Now, if you're on a server and you're working with some other people, you can duplicate them and share the copies. And that way you, can, you don't have to duplicate your effort. The way you duplicate them is you get one and you get an iron block, which I forgot to get. There we go, block of iron. You put the inscriber that you want to copy, in this case the logic press, in the top slot, block of iron here, and with power, it will squish, you watch it squish, squish, and now you've got a duplicate of your press. So that's pretty good, it'll work exactly the same. Now, how do you use these? All right, well, there's, like I said, there's four different types. Uh, the logic press works with gold. The calculation press works with pure Certus Quartz, not charged, not normal, only pure. The inscriber engineering press works with diamonds, and the silicon press works with silicon, and we'll get to that in a moment. So once you combine the correct press with the correct material. Give it some power, wait for it, it'll squish it. Squish, and you get the printed logic circuit. Now this input slot that I'm clicking into only takes one item. This will stack, so you don't have to worry about clearing it out each time. But you have to either shift click or drop click into this slot one at a time. You can automate this machine. This inscriber logic press slot, this top slot, is the top face. So anything input into the top face through a pipe or conduit will go into here. This one is the bottom. This one is inputting to any side. And this is outputting from any side. Now in recent versions, these can be sped up with augments, but or uh, speed upgrades. But uh, we'll cover that in a later video. So we can make uh, the printed logic circuit, but this isn't the final part. The other thing you're going to need to do is, oh, I dropped my silicon, is take this out, put in a silicon press and a piece of silicon, and this will get squished into a printed silicon. We're still not done. Now we're going to need some redstone. We're going to put the printed silicon, or the print, the, take this out, put the uh, printed logic circuit at the top, printed silicon at the bottom, and the redstone in the middle. And this, and you can see all three pieces are in there, you can't quite see the top one, gets squished together, and that is the final product, the logic processor. So for each of the three here, the logic, calculation, and engineering, they have these intermediate steps, and then they have their final steps, the logic processor, the calculation processor, and the engineering processor. And these are the three items you're going to need for lots of later recipes. You're going to need a lot of the logic processors and some of these other two. And all three of these have to be combined with the printed silicon and redstone to make their final uh, form. Now, how do you get silicon? Well, if we bring up the recipes here, uh, Applied Energistics looks to see what other mods are installed, and it works with uh, some mods 
to simplify recipes. In the case of silicon, here it's connected with Ender I.O., so it's using only Ender I.O.'s silicon. And that could be uh, got by clay or redstone, giving you an 80% chance of two or an 80% chance of one. The recipe I like is sand, or red sand, but this is the sand you're going to have lots of. That gives you a 50% chance of one. But the nice thing about sand is it's renewable. So if we come over here, and that's for a later thing, what we've got is lava and water with a piece of cobble in between, an extra utilities transfer node with just one world interaction upgrade is enough, and that will generate cobblestone. If I take this out, you can see it's generating cobblestone like that with a world interaction upgrade. That is going into this sag mill, which is being ground, grinding it up into sand and gravel. The sand and gravel are coming in here. It does make some extra sand. Not sure why. Let's figure that out. But it turns the sand into silicon, and the gravel will get turned into flint. So I've got these deep storage units here collecting the silicon and flint. And you can see I've got almost 10,000 silicon already. So this, for the cost of just a little bit of power, will generate all the silicon you need. So it's a good, convenient way to make that. All right, now it's time to start making some serious machines. We've got the inscriber, we've got all of our processors. So let's start, and the first thing we're gonna need is some cabling. So we're gonna start with some quartz fiber, which is certus quartz dust and glass, and that gets you three of these. This cable will only pass power, it will not pass data, uh, which will be important later on. But for now, we're just going to use it as a crafting component to make glass, I mean, glass cable. And that's one of these quartz fibers, two fluix crystals. So we're going to need a lot of these. And anywhere you see these fluix crystals, you can almost always use pure fluix. So that's you can use the doubled fluix for this, and it costs half as much. And that gets you four ME glass cables. So I'm going to get some of those. Now, this process of growing the crystals for doubling takes a long time and you do need some of these two for certain recipes so let's try and speed that up so what we're going to do is we're going to make a crystal growth accelerator and that requires a block of fluix which is either four regular fluix or eight pure same as it was with the certus and you can take you can turn pure into this and then unpack this back into four of these so you can convert backwards but we're making the crystal growth chamber to go forwards from regular fluix to pure, doubling the number of our crystals. So you get those, some of the quartz glass, some of those cables we've just made, and some iron, and you get the crystal growth accelerators. Now, these things have a top, which has got this round area, and a bottom that's the same, and the sides have this laddered texture. Cables can only attach to the, attach to the top and bottom. But you can place it like logs. If you place it on a side wall, it goes sideways. All right. So what we want to do is lay some things out here. And I want to need that gone, and that's good. All right. So we're going to lay out some cables like this. All right. Now, when we place these, we want to place them against the cables, like that, so that they're connecting to the uh, cables on their tops and bottoms, because we're putting them sideways. We can put one down here, one here, and one here. So as you can see, the cable goes down underneath and connects to the end of this bottom one. So they all have power. And, whoop, and where the power is going to come from is some of these vibration chambers. So let's grab some of these. And with this many, we want, with five, we want five of these vibration chambers. And now we're going to need some water. So let's grab some of that. Put it in the middle, and now we're going to need some coal. So let's toss some coal into them. They're all going to start heating up, and they're going to start giving power, and they're, they're glowing. So now, if we get some of these seeds and toss them in here, they will start growing much faster than the seeds that were tossed into this pool of water. Now the thing about these things is they're always drawing power. They can't tell if there's something in them or not. 
I mean, these vibration chambers will shut down if nothing's drawing power, not wasting your fuel, for the most part. But these will just keep drawing power. So the one thing we might want to be able to do is to turn them off. So let's go ahead and do that. We want an ME toggle bus. This is some glass cable, a lever, and some redstone, and you get the toggle bus. I'm also going to want a lever. Now, another thing you might need when you start using cables are some cable anchors, but for that we're going to need to make one of these quartz cutting knives. There's two varieties, nether quartz and certus. If you use nether quartz, you get the nether quartz cutting knife. If you use certus in these two slots, you get the certus quartz. Either way, it doesn't matter. And then you can put that with almost any metal, iron, copper, tin, silver, lead, I think, and you get cable anchors. So I'm going to take one of these cable anchors over here, and I'm going to break this piece of cable. And I'm going to put a cable anchor over here. Now the thing about cable anchors are is it separates cables. So if I have three cables here, and I want to put a cable next to them like this, they're going to connect. That makes sense. If you don't want them to connect, you can put the cable anchors on like this, and now they don't connect. And it doesn't matter which side has the anchor, they won't connect. And in fact, you can even, because these are like multi-part blocks, you can even put an anchor in every space if you want it, but it doesn't make any difference. It might just look more appealing. So cable anchors separate cables, and what I want to do is the power coming out of these guys is going to go straight past. It's not going to connect because of that anchor. It's going to go around and get all of them that way. But now I want to put a switch here. So let's put this toggle bus right there. And it doesn't come with any cable, so you have to put a cable back. All right, so now we've got cable coming to this toggle bus and not connecting because of the anchor. And all these things are dark. They're not getting any power. So we have to flip a switch, and now that's going to light up. So with this, we can turn it on and off. See, they're all glowing. Turn it off, they go dark. Turn it back on, they're glowing. So when this thing is fully grown, we can turn the whole system off. Now there is a slight problem here. If I step here, you notice I just picked up the crystals, which are 69% grown already. Toss them back in. When you step onto this cable, you're actually slightly lower down into that block, which lets you pick up what's next to it. And we don't want that. So let's do cable facade. That takes four anchors and any block. So I'm going to grab this same skystone block, which is a cooked version of that meteor rock. And it makes cable facades. So I'm going to take some of these facades. And the nice thing about these, these attach to cables. You can see it comes with the anchor, attaches like that, making it look completely like a regular block. But of course it still has the cable in it. So now we can come over here and place it like that and you can see it's flush with the other objects here. And we can walk on it and it's nice and smooth and we won't accidentally pick up our crystals, which now have completely grown. Check that out. So let's turn it off. That is so much faster and it didn't take that much coal. I mean, I can't tell if this is how far into that first block of coal, but it's, you know, it wasn't a lot of power. And we generated a whole stack of Sirtis Quartz Crystals. Now you can throw multiple stacks in there, and they'll all go at the same time and use the same amount of power. It's how long they're running that determines how much power is used, not how many crystals. So if you can do them all at once, you'll save. All right, moving on. Next, we're going to start doing some storage and manipulation of items. This is like the main part of the mod. And one of the first things we're going to need is one of these illuminated panels. Now, these things, for the cost of a little bit of AE power, they will give off light. But there are other lighting options. I've never used them as such. But they are needed as part of crafting recipes. So you want to make them. And this is where the glowstone comes in. Glowstone, redstone, iron, quartz glass gives you three illuminated panels. So you get a lot of bang for your glowstone. The next thing you need are a formation core and an annihilation core. Now, if you have trouble seeing some colors, you may not be able to tell that these two are different at first glance. This one is orange and green, and this one is green and blue. If you are confused, make sure you put your cursor over it and just see what its name is. In this case, formation core for this one. 
This one, they both use Fluix Dust and a logic processor, but this one uses Certus and this one uses Nether. And you get two for each recipe. So you need a bunch of those. And the, you're going to combine all three of these things with another logic processor to get the ME terminal. Now this is the basic form uh, of the interface to get at your items in a system. And if I right click it now, you can see it gives you this whole GUI with lots of controls to adjust how you're looking at your stuff. And I've got a lot of stuff because this thing is hooked up to things behind the scenes. By itself, it's not going to do anything. But it can be changed, it's sorting can be changed by clicking this. Right here I'm sorting by the number of items. So the thing I have the most of is at the top and the thing I have the least of is at the bottom. You can reverse the direction of any of these. By clicking this you can go to at which is sorting by mod. So all the Minecraft items are at the top and then all the applied energistic stuff to applied energistics to stuff is next. And if you have lots of different mods they'll all be grouped together. Uh, this uses the inventory tweak sorting order, which is normally for chests, but it, it's get, it gets pulled into here, if you ever have modified that. Or you can just sort by name, so the things that are alphabetically sorted. I always like the sort by item, because uh, anything else you want to find, you can click up in here and search for glowstone. And it eliminates it just what you want. Right-clicking here clears it. The second item... Change toggles between things you have stored in here, like this, and things you can craft. That's what the little hammer is. We're not doing any crafting in this video. That'll be for a later video. But you're, most of the time, you're going to have it on stored and craftable. This box changes how this thing functions. Uh, its main form is auto search. So when I first open up here and I don't click anything, I just type a letter, G, L, O. It's automatically typing in there. It has the insertion mark, which you can see in the icon here. Click it, the insertion mark goes away. And now when I first open it up, if I type G, nothing happens. There's no insertion point. You have to actually click here and then type. The next form connects with NEI, this stuff over here. So when I come in here and type G L O W, not only does this get filtered by what I type, but this down here gets filled in with the same thing, filtering all of NEI. This can be handy if you're uh, not sure what you're looking for, and or if you to see if you have it, and if you don't have it, how to craft it. You can also have that same mode where you have to click to uh, make it work. Now, why would you want to have this so that it didn't automatically select? Well, that's because if you're hovering over something you type R, it gives you the recipe for the item. So this quartz glass, if I type R, it shows me the recipe for it. This is part of NEI. Also, if you hover over something and type U, it'll show you what uses, what recipes use that to make other things. But if you want to use the auto search, and it is convenient to have that automatically selected when you come in here, because most of the time you're going to come in here and try and get something. But now if you type R, it gets typed up here. You can't get your item. But there is a trick. If you type Control R, then it works normally. So my suggestion is auto search and use the Control R and Control U for anything in here, and uh, the, or even even anything in here. Though these will usually be uh, clicking when you're not in creative like I am. This last button lets you adjust the original size or expand it to fill your entire screen. Depending on your resolution, this might show more or less items. All right. Now, I don't usually use an ME terminal. Uh, I always upgrade it by adding a crafting table and a calculation processor to the terminal to make the crafting terminal. It's exactly the same, see, but it adds this, the crafting terminal. So you don't get quite as many items if you're on the expanded view. But you do get this crafting terminal, and this is very handy. Because you can, if I do a control recipe, uh, control R on the crafting table, it'll show me the recipe. But now there's a little question mark here. If I shift, if I hold down shift and click the question mark, well, I don't have any wood. Let's, uh, <laughs> let's put some wood in the system. All right, here's some wood. 
toss that in there. So now if I do Control R on the crafting table and Shift click on the question mark, it's pulled some wood out, put it in the crafting table, and it's ready to craft. I can now take one out, toss it in here, or Shift click to get as many as I can make, or a full stack. Now this will work also with stuff over here. So if I get a little bit more wood and toss it in there, and if I was over here and I said, well, I want to make a chest. Click on the chest, shows the recipe, shift, click on the question mark, and there it is. Now I can make chests. So the combination of NEI and this crafting terminal makes it very easy to make stuff. Now, Applied Energistics does have auto crafting, but with this, and all of your materials in one place easily re reached, with the full index of NEI available here with all of its recipes, it's already pretty easy to craft stuff. So I recommend upgrading your terminal to a crafting terminal, and then you don't really need one of these around. Just use this. All right, but again, these all we've crafted here are these terminals, not all this stuff behind that's providing all those items. These will do absolutely nothing until we move a little farther. So let's move on to the ME chest. A lot of people start out with this. I don't, but let's give it a try anyway. For this, we're going to need an ME terminal. So you don't even need to make either one of these if you're going to just start with one ME chest. Just make a terminal and then use it as in the recipe for the ME chest, along with a Fluix crystal, which could be a pure Fluix crystal, and two ME glass cables. With the ME chest, you need power. So I've got one of the vibration chambers here. I'm going to strap it down. Now if you click on it, you see it's got this one slot for something, and the top is glowing, but if we click on it, it says ME chest cannot read storage cell. So it needs a storage cell here. So let's go ahead and move on to storage cells. Now the first part of making a storage cell is the storage component, and the f basic one is the 1K ME storage component, made like so, with the logic processor and four Certus Quartz, for redstone, that gives you the 1K ME storage component. That's the first tier. The next tier is the 4K storage, which uses three 1Ks and a calculation processor around some quartz glass. So three gets you a 4K. Now this pattern is going to repeat. We're going to do it again. Three of the 4Ks and an engineering processor gets you a 16K. And three of the 16Ks and an engineering processor gets you a 64K. That is the highest size that is in Applied Energistics 2 itself. There is a mod called Extra Cells, which I have installed, that adds some larger tiers. You take three of the 64s to make a 256, three of the 256s to make a 124, three of the 124s to make a 496, and then the highest tier, four of the 490, 496, gives you a 16,384. So that's a lot of storage, but it's also a whole lot of materials, and these are using glowstone and two in, uh, processors. So that's a very expensive thing, but it gives you a lot of bytes of storage. But if you notice here, 0 of 63 item types. That means all of these are exactly the same in that they can only store, and this is, here's the 1K, 0 of 63 types. It only store 63 different things. It's just that the bigger cells can store a lot more of them. All right, so what if once we've got this... Uh, storage component. Can we put this in here? No, this doesn't go in here. We need to put it in a housing, a storage cell. Craft it with some iron, redstone, and quartz glass, and you get an ME storage cell. These do not stack, but they have a nice feature with them. As you can see here, if you put it in a crafting table, you get back your storage component and an empty storage housing. You can craft the empty storage housing yourself just by putting nothing in the middle. But then you can take any empty storage housing in any of these storage components and combine them in a crafting table to refill it. So you can pull them apart. Maybe if you had three of, three of these type drives, you can pull out their components, craft them together into a 4K, and then put them back into one of the housings to get a 4K storage cell. So it's fairly nice that you can pull them apart and put them back together. But here we're going to put this 1K in here. And when we do, the top lights up in this grid, 
And if we click on the top, and only the top, if we click on the side, you see this. Only the top will get you our familiar ME terminal display, which we can put things into. Now these items are being stored in this hard drive. If I take this out, you know, it's off. There's nothing in there. But it's in here. If you look, it says one of 63 types. So it's actually stored in there. But the only way to get at it is to put it back in here and access it through this. Now it can hold 63 different things and it can hold multiples of those. And it stores more than a stack in a space. So if I get more wood, I can put four stacks of wood in here and look, it says 256. They're all taking up one slot, one of the 63 types. So there's two types being used for these two types. Even though there's a lot more of this. Now I can keep putting more and more wood here, but eventually the bytes are going to be filled up. Right now it's only 49 of 1024. More and more of everything in here will use up those bytes. About eight items per byte. <clears throat> Less a little bit per each type. It's a little bit more complicated. Uh, I've got a whole video talking about how to calculate that and how it works. Check that out if you're interested in the details. But now we can start putting stuff in here, but only 63 things, and this is not upgradable in any way. And this interface can only see what's in that drive. If we put another drive next to it and put another cell into it, this can only see what's in this drive, and this would this one would only be able to see what's in this drive. They're, they're not reading what else is on the network. So let's skip over this design and go to the next thing, the ME drive. Now, the ME drive takes two engineering processors, engineering processors, some cable and iron, and you get an empty drive. So let's go ahead and slap one of these down. You can see it takes, takes it can take up to 10 storage cells. So let's get a few of these 1K storage cells. Why not? Let's get to oh, 03. Why not? And toss them in. But the top of this thing doesn't do anything. It just it, it has only one GUI. So to get it, what's inside it, and we won't be able to use this. This is only seeing what's it's inside it. It won't tell us what's on these. So we're going to need our terminal now. So we need some cable. So let me grab some of this cable. And we're going to need a crafting terminal. So I prefer the crafting terminal over the ME terminal. And it doesn't matter where we put this. We can put it on the side. We can put it on the top. I'm going to put it on the top so it's easier to see. And we stick our crafting terminal on. Notice it's inside the same block as the cable. These are all multi-part devices. And these terminals can only go on cable. It really doesn't work anywhere else. It's being faced down here. It wants a cable behind it like that. So you stick it on there like that. You could actually stick on multiples if you wanted. They're all taking up the same amount of space. But if you break any one thing with your hand or a tool, it's going to break the whole thing. So now we can see, look, we can see what's over here. We can also see what's in all these. In fact, if I toss this stuff in here and then look in the drive and hover, three of 63 types. So those, the, uh, the drives, the ME crafting terminal and this cable, these three middle three things, are on this drive. If I take that drive out, they're gone, because they're in here. Pop it back in, they're back. The wood and this thing are over on the old storage drive. Now if I take it out and put it back in, it might move it. Yep, four. And the wood, if I take all the wood out, put all the wood back in, five. So everything is on this drive. If I take this drive out, see it's empty. Put the drive back in, everything's back. This drive is now empty and this interface cannot see anything because that drive has nothing on it. Zero of 363 types. So where the items are going is entirely up to the system and it does a pretty good job of moving them around and putting them where it makes the most sense for them to be as far as the sizes of the cells go. Usually it'll go to the closest if there's no other reason to put it somewhere else. And they may move around even. You can't rely on them staying there. There are ways to do that, but we're not going to cover that in this video. All right, so now we've got a pretty good system. We don't need this anymore. We just need power. I'll take it away. Oop. In fact, we can put its cell in this drive. Why not? 
now we can dump lots of stuff in here and we can craft stuff and this is pretty much what most people need out of applied energistics too just this simple little setup here if you put some larger drives in there you can hold more of certain items and you can even slap down another drive right next to it and put more cells in and they will all be visible from this terminal now with just this one terminal and drives I'd say you can have seven drives and one terminal give it power you've got lots of crafting uh, or lots of storage and the ability to craft using NEI and this crafting terminal pretty sweet now some of the other tools you might need are the wrenches now as I said when you break this it breaks both and I don't have them anymore let me grab them again because I put them inside <laughs> yeah if you lose power to your system you can't get any of your stuff and if like all your coal is in the system you can't you know if this runs out of power and all your coal is in here you're gonna have to go find coal somewhere else because you can't get at it until this thing has power so it might be a good idea to keep some sort of backup for power outside of the ME system <clears throat> just an idea but if you get one of these wrenches and there's two varieties the nether and the certus uh, if you use certus quartz you get a certus wrench if you use nether quartz you get another wrench pretty straightforward if you use one of these and crouch right click on a component it takes off just that component so if I had two of these here I could crouch right click one get it you can even crouch right click click and take the cable and then that thing is not attached to anything anymore and it won't work see it's it's when it has no power or it's not connected it goes dark like this so let's put it back on oh and when I said that you could have this terminal and seven of these drives that's because this cable and the machines attached to it can only handle eight machines by default this is because of AE2's channel system and for that I've got a whole nother video and I suggest you watch that to learn about channels but for the basics of starting out this is gonna work just great alright so the, the uh, wrenches are pretty handy but there's an even better version called the network tool which takes a wrench either one one of those illuminated panels calculation processor and a chest and now this thing will do the exact same thing if you crouch right click it'll pop stuff off okay no problem but if you don't crouch and you right click it'll show you everything that's connected to each other on the network here we have our vibration chamber for power our two ME drives one piece of cable and one ME terminal so that's pretty good isn't it it tells you and it doesn't matter which piece you click click any of them it'll show you everything on that network it'll also show you how much power it's using which because of the configuration file settings is showing it in RF per tick even though this machine is telling us in AE per tick now you get several RF for one AE so uh, this one machine that's only produ can produce 10 AE per tick is more than enough for this which is needing you know 13 RF per tick in general this thing is oscillating around 13 RF per tick. <clears throat> All right, so that's the network tool. Uh, there's some other tools that you might find useful. For that, we're going to need to make, oops. Yeah, one other thing about the network tool is you can stick uh, spare upgrade cards, applied energistics. And we're not going to cover these things, but I'll mention them here. Applied energistics has uh, upgrade tools. Uh, upgrade cards that will modify how machines function uh, capacity crafting fuzzy inverter redstone and the biggest one the accelerator card that makes things move faster you can just store those in here as a handy place to keep them when you're working on your machines all right but first we need their energy cell here which is four fluix dust four certus quartz around quartz glass and that gets you an energy cell this thing acts like a battery for AE power. If I stick it here, you can see it's up in the whale, it's charging up. It's storing it as RF because of the config. It can hold 400,000 RF, and it's up to 3,000 RF. And it's, this thing is now running at full speed to fill it up. This can act as a power buffer for your system, but I wouldn't rely on it. Always make sure that you can produce as much as you need to use 
And then storage is just sort of bonus on the cake if you need to take apart your power system for some reason. This can keep you running for a little bit, but uh, it's always better to keep your power running. But we're not going to use that there right now. Instead, we're going to use it as a, in the recipe for this thing, the color applicator. This is new. This takes a 4K ME storage, which, if you remember, is oops, uh, recipe is three of these 1K storage components. It takes one of the formation cores and that energy cell, some iron, and you get the color applicator, which I am just going to grab one from my inventory, which is already fully charged. How do you charge it? You stick it in the charger just by right clicking. It goes in there, charges up. Now, straight out of the box, it's not going to do anything. We're going to need to make some, some materials to go in it. So for that, we're going to need the matter condenser. This is a pretty cheap thing to make. Some iron, gla regular glass, and fluix dust. <clears throat> but what it needs is stuff. It doesn't matter what stuff. Any stuff will do. I'm going to stick it here next to this cobble generator, and I am going to increase its number of matter uh, world interaction upgrades so it produces much, much faster. And in here we have some settings, and I'm going to change this trash to condense matter into balls. All right, it's going to make condensed matter balls, but before I can do that, it needs a storage component. 1K will do for this purpose. This machine has multiple uses, but we're just going to use this one right now. As you can see, it fills up. It's basically getting lots and lots of cobble from this thing. Uh, if it's running at its slower speed, this goes up very, very slowly. You see, one, two, three, four, just going up very, very slowly. This is only making one cobble every half tick, I think. This is going to make a stack every half tick, so it goes much, much faster and fills back up. So you're going to want to get eight of these, and then you put them in the crafting table with a die of your choice. So put them around some red, and you get red paint balls. All right? You can make any of the colors for Minecraft, and here I've got some additional colors. I've got uh, blue, and I've got green. But now how do you get them into this color applicator? For that, we're going to need our uh, ME chest again. All right, so I'm going to put the ME chest down here, and I'm going to put the color applicator into the drive slot, which is rather strange. And then in the top, I'm going to put in the paint balls, and then you're going to pull out the color applicator. That's why in its crafting recipe, it had a storage component, because it can hold these paint balls. Now, what do they do? Well, they don't shoot, but if you crouch, right-click, nothing, it changes the color. It toggles between all the colors you have stored in it. See? But now if I just regular right-click this cable, it changes its color. Crouch right-click change, change. Crouch right-click change. This lets you paint your cables. Now this is great if you've got a whole lot of cables in the world and you either don't like their color or want to change it. You can do that. Or if you want to keep cables from connecting, if they're different colors, they won't connect. So this is a great tool for keeping your cables managed and changing the colors. So I highly recommend that one. The last tool you might want to find a good use for is the portable cell. This uses another one of those energy cells, only a 1K storage, but it takes an ME chest itself. And when combined, and then you have to put it in the charger and charge it back up. And I've got one here I've already charged up. When you right-click it, you can put stuff in it, which I've already done. And look at this. It's got 3,328 stone, a stack of wood, a stack of red wool, and a stack of iron. But notice it's got a power bar, and this power bar is going down. It's at 80%. Now it's dropped to 79%. It's going down because I have it open. Once I stop opening it and I look at it, the power is not going down. So as long, it's sort of like the refrigerator. You don't want to leave the refrigerator open. You're wasting power. Well, leaving this open, you're wasting power. But it can hold quite a bit. Not as much as a regular drive. It only holds 512 bytes, so half as much as a smallest uh, drive, 1K drive. And only 27 types, which is this many slots. But it can, it can hold more than a chest of this size, because it can hold more than a stack in each of these slots. 
or at least some of the slots. So if you're building, this is a great tool to carry around your building materials with. And the rain is telling me it's about time to go. So I think we've covered everything here. This is a just a beginner's starting tour of Applied Energistics, just to get you started. And I recommend something like this is a great way to go. And remember, you can always get fancy, and uh, these things have the facades around them, like so. So you can cover things up and you know hide all your cables, if that's what you so wish, even when you don't have much. Boomph. <laughs> And you can color things. Well, I can't color that. I've got to get at the cables to color. But you can do that with a wrench or the network tool. All right, so hopefully this helps you get started in Applied Energistics. And if you check out some of my other videos, I talk a little bit more about the uh, more advanced features, uh, the uh, how the channels work, how data flows between objects and machines. And I'll be doing another one on buses and how they work, as well as the upgrades. So hopefully you like this, share it with your friends, like, subscribe, and this is Non-Sanity, signing out. Take care, be good, see you next time.